Health Minister Mark Holland there and NDP leader Jagmeet Singh detailing the new dental care plan for this country. It's a key pillar of the Liberal Governance Agreement with New Democrats. But today's announcement fell short on some details. We know when Canadians will get coverage, but the feds are still negotiating with provincial insurance programs and still need to set rates so dentists can decide whether or not to voluntarily join the program. How then will all of this play out politically? Let's bring in the front bench to talk about that. Former senior advisor to the Liberal Ontario governments of Dalton McGuinty and Kathleen Wynne, Dan Moulton is here. He's now a partner with Crestview Strategy. Shakir Chambers worked in Prime Minister Stephen Harper's office before becoming a policy advisor to the International Trade Minister. He's now a principal at Ernst Cliff Strategies. Kathleen Monk is the former director of communications to the late Jack Layton. She's now the principal owner of Monk and Associates, and Laura Stone is a Queen's Park reporter for the Globe and Mail. Hi, everybody. Good nice here. to see you. We've got the, the coalition well represented here at the <laughs> in studio. Dan, Dan I'll, I'll start. I'll start with you. Is this a, a an even political win for both New Democrats and Liberals, or is there someone better advantage through today's announcement? Well, let me start by saying I'm not sure most Canadians care very much about who's winning and losing mm. today beyond the nine million people that yeah. are going to get dental care. Sure. I think that is. Uh, That's our job. We, we yeah. <laughs> I hear you. I, I mean, there are politics at play here, and, and, and we'll get to that. But the reality, I, I actually think, for most voters, is that they'll be pleased that action is happening. People want to see governments work together and get things done. They want to see provinces and the federal government working together. They want to see parties working together to actually achieve results. And that's what happened today. And I think that's what matters most for the political consequences of this, is Canadians are seeing a government in action and actually delivering something that they have long said they would do and a lot of Canadians are going to benefit from. Do you, I mean, they, they didn't always say they would do it, Kathleen. The NDP, through this agreement, like this was the main pillar mm -hmm, of what they, they said they wanted to force mm -hmm. them to do. They had run on it for a couple of elections. And and uh, as I pointed out to the minister, the, the Liberals had voted against it back in 2021 when there was a motion from Jack Harris. But like many other things that they've announced through the agreement with the NDP, you know, they, they make it their own, right? And they often get a lot of credit for it. Do you anticipate that will be the case here? Well, I think the Liberals will get some shine off of this for sure, for sure. But certainly, I think Canadians understand that really New Democrats have been driving this program for a really long time. And that's this very one that's very close to Jagmeet Singh. But to answer your question that you put to Dan, who benefits, who loses out of this today, I would say it's got to be the Conservatives. They've been talking about affordability all fall, if not before fall, saying they'd help Canadians. But who's actually helping Canadians right now save money? It's actually New Democrats, with the support of the Liberal government, pushing through a program, a new program. So just to be clear, folks won't have to pay for this. They literally go to the dentist and not have to present a credit card. It's literally just their ID of some sort and they will be able to have service. And that's anyone, any senior or any youth under 18. And that's significant because that proportion will not only save, you know, Canadians money, because listen, 1%, Mr. Holland, Minister Holland didn't say this on your show. He said it would save money. It was a bit kind of loosey on, on where the savings would be. But we know right now that 1% of emergency room visits are due to non-traumatic, kind of low-level, non-urgent care things like tooth decay, like abscesses, like, um, you know, things that are happening in the mouth that are dangerous. And that, that will save Canadians money for the healthcare system overall. So, so Shakir, let me get you to respond to that. Do you think that the majority of Canadians are watching this and saying, hey, look, the NDP and Liberals did something together that will positively impact, you know, my access to something that I have previously found unaffordable? And Or do you think that they will um, so, sort of uh, see it as uh, something that affects their lives on the margin? Or, or will they be critical, like Kathleen said, of the Conservatives? Yeah, I think, listen, I give Jagmeet Singh and the NDP kudos. Uh, they've done a pretty good job of promoting this, as you know, them forcing the government to do this. You know, I think I even heard Jagmeet Singh say there's a hotline they can call uh, for them to tell them how to walk through this program. So good on them. But I think ultimately, listen, these are politicians. I question how many votes are actually in this particular policy for, for the NDP to gain moving forward. And I think if you're the Conservatives, there's really no re need for you to address this in any capacity, right? I think this is obviously a political trap for them to walk into, because obviously, if the Conservatives start debating whether or not they would keep this program or how they would amend it, the next thing the Liberals and the NDP are going to do is, you know what, they're going to cut this program, right? The, the logical thing that for the NDP to say is that Conservatives are the party of cutting social programs, cutting social programs, so why would Pierre walk into that and start talking about the merits of this program or whether or not he wants to have it in place? I think ultimately, and polling will show you this, the things that they're zeroed in on, and you know, I sound like a robot, but it's the affordability, the housing, the, the economic stuff, it's doing very well for them. I think if you are a conservative, if you're a Pierre Polyev, there is no convincing reason, there is no data, there is no polling that shows you should deviate from that at any point. And I think as long as they stay focused on that, 
there was no need for them to go issue to issue and address what the Liberals and NDP are announcing. They know what really matters to Canadians, and Canadians are clearly associating them with those issues of cost of living, affordability, and the economic things and the pocketbook issues. Do you anticipate then as a result of that, Laura, the Liberals and the NDP to do, and we're going to talk about this in the next segment as well, but to do more of what we, they have been doing over the past few weeks, which is sort of create a contrast with the Conservatives and use this to say, oh, they would cut this. I think Shakir is right. I don't anticipate Pierre Polyev engaging on that, but it does seem like the Liberals and the NDP are, are engaging themselves in that direction. It does. I mean, the Liberals and the NDP are clearly targeting the Conservatives here. I mean, I sort of did a double take today when I saw uh, the NDP health critic Don Davies at the government's announcement, part mm -hmm. of the official announcement at the podium with them. They're clearly doing this aligned. We saw him in the House of Commons, too, using the NDP using their questions to go after the Conservatives. So I think you will see uh, the Liberals and NDP kind of tag team and they, they clearly view this as a mutually beneficial relationship. I mean, the Liberals uh, get a win politically. They've had you know a very difficult a few months on the affordability front, on the housing crisis. They could use this to say that they're actually doing something about it. And the NDP, of course, can, can also claim victory as, as they did throughout the day, uh, saying that they've forced the Liberals into this action, that they're the ones that are prodding the Liberals to go further. So I think this is um, you know clearly... Uh, uh, an attack against the Conservative Party. And I will have to disagree with Shakira a bit. I mean, I do think this is going to fall into the affordability, um, you know, uh, topic that, that the Conservatives have been talking about as well. I mean, I do think that this does, it is a pocketbook issue. It is a health issue. So I think that this is, they are clearly trying to, to, to trap the Conservatives somewhat here with this one. Does, is trapping conservatives, Kathleen, I'll just get you guys to quickly in, mutually beneficial, though? Because often when the contrast is painted between progressives and conservatives, the liberals are the ones who end up benefiting in elections. But it depends what kind of political landscape and context you're working in. If we're working in a landscape where most Canadian voters are tired already of a Justin Trudeau that we're approaching nine you years... You think it could go a different way? They could go another way, frankly, right? So the point is right now that all the progressive parties do need to push down those numbers of the conservatives, and they need to point out that clear examples, whether it's dental care or child care. I'll point out to my colleague Shari Shakir that that was another issue that doesn't poll necessarily well. It's not going to have a big vote getter, except that it does transform the lives of mothers and fathers who need that child care for their children to get back into the workforce. So some but didn't the Conservatives always... vote in favor of that legislation? I think they did. Uh, child, child care. care. They have fought yeah. against Just... child care for no, but decades. I think they Trust me, because we've been working on it. No, I know what you're saying. They don't, they don't view yeah. it the same way, and they certainly yeah. haven't publicly, but I think at the end of the day, they ended up not even but the question is, it. would things like the child, Canadian child benefit, would things like child care actually say? exist under a conservative government? Would they move forward with a program like that? Shakir, do you want, yeah, go ahead no, and then I'll get I, Shakir. I think I just want to add, I think that's exactly right in terms of what the Liberals are going to try and frame the debate around heading into 2024. We saw some of it last week with the Conservative opposition to the fall economic statement legislation, uh, pointing out all of the things that would be cut because the Conservatives are voting against it. And I think this is the prime example of a program that when we go to voters in a couple of years' time, the Liberals will be able to say, Pierre Polyev is going to take away dental benefits for 9 million Canadians. That's the exact kind of attack that Liberals need right now, and I think that is presented to them through programs like this. Shakir, I'll give you the last word to respond to that. I could just say, I mean, if the Liberals and NDP are, are sharing policies and splitting votes, that obviously benefits the Conservatives. So I'm happy mm -hmm. if they want to work together and have this kind of progressive opposition. That's totally fine for the Conservatives come election time.